Hi, I'm Patu from Free Fin Cal, and let's talk about what is portfolio drawdown and how it can be used to measure risk of a mutual fund or stock or an investment portfolio. Last week, you may remember that we talked about the standard deviation, and uh, there I said that there are multiple ways to measure risk. The standard deviation is the most popular way to measure risk or the volatility of the mutual fund portfolio by uh, or a stock put, or a stock or a mutual fund by looking at its uh, uh, looking at the uh, fluctuations in the monthly returns, uh, excuse me, we shall, uh, the, the drawdown is another method to look at uh, portfolio risk or security risk. So let me just illustrate that. So let's say the price of a, a stock uh, evolves like this with, with the time, it goes up like that and there is, it drops down then it grows up, then there is a huge drop and then it zooms up like that so let's say that's the imaginary price of a stock and um, so you can see that up to this point around this you can call this the uh, fr starting from here this is the peak this is the first peak of the uh, uh, peak in the stock price and then it falls down down on to this point that's called the drawdown the fall from uh, the peak up to this point this is the peak in the price and then from that peak it falls to that much that's called a drawdown and then it again there is a it moves up here and then that's the peak and then it falls down all the way there that's again the drawdown and you can guess that the maximum drawdown as it's uh, usually uh, represented the maximum drawdown is the maximum fall from the peak and uh, this is called the uh, 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 drawdown maximum date and this is called the drawdown value date and the time it takes between this to this is called the drawdown duration and we can see an example of this at Morningstar so this is quantum long term equity and I am in the risk rating tab you can see here this is the drawdown peak date the drawdown value date and this is the maximum drawdown duration the, that lasted for two months and you can see the maximum drawdown the, uh, so um, maximum drawdown is the usually the percentage change from the maximum how much it falls so it will always be negative so uh, for quantum long term equity the maximum drawdown for uh, uh, let's look at the duration 3 year duration is minus 8% while whereas the index which is uh, BSE 500 used by Morningstar has uh, fallen by 12% uh, so that's a bigger fall the index has fallen more uh, than the fund so that's the uh, concept of the maximum drawdown. So, I'm uh, sorry, the category has fallen by minus 12%. The index has fallen by almost the same, pretty much the same. You can now change it to five years and you can see that the maximum drawdown is minus 12.7%. The category is minus 19%. The index is minus 18%. Being quantum long-term equity, you can guess that it will always have a, a lower drawdown. So, this is minus 20%, minus 26%, minus 27%. You can see that the fund has always had a maximum drawdown which is lesser so the fund has always fallen lower than the uh, category uh, average and the index again this is the peak date the valley date and the time uh, uh, between the peak and the uh, valley so if you go back here this is the peak the date corresponding to this is peak date valley date and that's the drawdown duration so this is another way to measure risk of course the this is also a, a, a different way of looking at downside protection so if the fund has only fallen by 20 percent whereas the category other the category average is minus 26 and uh, the index is minus 27 that means that the quantum long-term equity investors are protected uh, to a certain extent from market falls so that's a it's again a measure of relative risk and it's also uh, another way of looking at downside protection in, instead of the downside capture ratio which i keep talking my mutual fund screeners. Now there is one more piece of information. So I said this is the uh, drawdown peak, the drawdown valley and uh, this is the drawdown duration. Now notice that the price here, it, uh, it, this is the maximum then it fell down and then it recovered and it took this much time. So it took almost like that much time to recover back uh, to the maximum. That's called the uh, uh, duration for which the portfolio, portfolio was underwater. So you can see that that's the peak and then it goes down and then it comes back again and reaches this value. That's the, we call this duration, this time as the uh, duration over which the portfolio was underwater. So, so now uh, notice that there are two measures of risk here. 
the vertical axis, this distance, that is the peak to uh, uh, valley fall, that is also a measure of risk, this is the maximum drawdown. The horizontal axis, which is a measure of time, that is also a uh, measure of risk. So this is called the duration over which the portfolio was underwater and uh, uh, the peak to uh, valley, that's the drawdown duration. Again, that is also a measure of risk. So you're measuring two risks here, two, I mean, there are two measures of risk here, excuse me. One is in the, uh, for a single graph, you're measuring risk in the, in terms of the, how much the price fell, that is in the vertical axis and the time over which uh, the price, the portfolio remained underwater. Uh, in this uh, drawdown duration does not mean much. Uh, this is the more important measure. Uh, this is not actually reported in uh, Morningstar, but I have reported this in the tactical asset allocation series. You can see the link in the description box. So this will tell you how long it took for the stock or the uh, mutual fund or the index to recover. So there are two measures of risk here. So let's uh, see how to measure or calculate this drawdown. It's quite simple. In fact, I can show you also how to do the standard deviation as well if you are interested. So let's do the drawdown. So to measure the drawdown, the first thing I'll do is so that's the date and that is I think Motla uh, Oswal uh, multi-cap 35, I think. Some fund, it doesn't matter what it is. So the first date, I'll just put a zero for the drawdown. That's the reference point. And then I'll say uh, this NAV minus maximum of from B, uh, from inception to that date divided by maximum of that value. So that's just the, that's the drawdown. So that's it. It's just uh, essentially uh, the current NAV minus the maximum from that NAV to all the previous data points. So current NAV minus maximum divided by maximum is the drawdown. Now one thing we should do is to fix this. We want uh, to fix this cell to be the same as you scroll down. So we will lock that cell and that's it that's the drawdown for that's it so then we go down then you have a so you have a drawdown here of that much a very very small drawdown so let's just copy let me just copy this down it's just some random example i'm taking don't worry too much about the fund and all that That's it. And now we can just plot the date, the NAV, and the drawdown. So we just plot this. I think we need to zoom this down a little bit. Okay. Now we can click on this. So it looks like nothing, but that's because of the scale. Just come to plot on this and put it on the. I'll plot the axis on this side and that's your drawdown. Now can, can you see, uh, I'll just change this a little bit so that it's more visible. There you go. Now you can something So now you can see the uh, the blue line is the NAV and the orange is the drawdown. You can see that, for example, let's take this. Uh, sorry, the, the the balloon tip is annoying and it's kind of I can't get rid of it. So think of this as the maximum right there, and then from that maximum it falls down to this point. So you can see that the drawdown goes down like this. So that's your maximum drawdown. This point is the maximum drawdown. And this is the duration for which the portfolio was underwater. So from this value, it took that much time to recover back to the old NAV. So that's the time over which the portfolio was underwater. underwater. So it's a very quick way for you to take the, uh, do this for uh, the index and uh, uh, um, mutual fund together, plot them and you can compare the two graphs and you will get two graphs which dip down like this and you can find out which has got the, uh, how frequently the uh, mutual fund had a lower maximum drawdown than the index and you can quickly uh, visually look at the risk. Soon I will be incorporating the drawdown as well into the mutual fund screener. 
So uh, please explore uh, what this Trado means, learn more about it, uh, look at the uh, data points and da data for your fund at Morningstar. Value research does not give you drawdown. This gives you, uh, Morningstar gives you drawdown, but it's a trivial matter to immediately measure the drawdown. So uh, please try it out. And uh, before I finish this video, I can show you quickly, I can get rid of this and I don't need this anymore. I'll show you how to measure the standard deviation. So um, what you need to do is to, I will, I will show you the daily standard deviation. So this price minus that price my that's a percentage change that's the daily return or the daily change in the uh NAV. i'll just do it for a few data points so that's those are all daily mutual fund returns you shouldn't say that's the standard deviation this is so daily returns and i can just calculate the standard deviation as uh, the, I think it is that's it that's oops that's the standard. That's the uh, standard deviation of this data set. Of course, there are ways for you to uh, annualize this and so on. I, I'm not going to get into it. This is a daily standard deviation. People usually uh, uh, calculate monthly returns and calculate the monthly standard deviation and uh, annualize it. They'll multiply it by the square root of 12, I think, if I remember right. Uh, but it doesn't matter. That's the essence of how it's done. And coming back to the drawdown, uh, so this is the images. Now I need to find the maximum drawdown. So to do that, that's quite simple. I just say maximum of all these numbers. That will give you the oops. Oh, sorry, uh, minimum. Sorry, we're looking for negative. There are negative points. Right? So I keep saying minimum of all these negative numbers, and that's the uh, drawdown. So that's minus 0.19. You can go back and check that data. That's the data. So you can see minus 0.19 is right here, and a 0.18, and that's yeah. That, this must be the one. That, that's the maximum. It's the biggest fall, biggest fall from the peak. So all the zeros are essentially peaks. That's the biggest fall, and that's called the maximum drawdown. <coughs> the problem of looking at only the maximum drawdown is it does not. It completely hides all the other dips. Notice how many all the other dips. Uh, this also is pretty much a big drawdown, right? That's also a big drawdown. But all the other uh, drawdowns will be uh, not considered if you only consider the maximum drawdown. So uh, even if you consider uh, uh, this, the maximum time under which the portfolio was underwater, again, other uh, durations will not be considered. So you'll have to, it's better to do it visually. And uh, again, you can consider a rolling drawdown, just like rolling standard deviation and rolling return and so on. Other things can be done. But do give this a try for your mutual funds. Uh, plot your plot the drawdown on your own. Explore the data at Morningstar, and uh, let me know if it all makes sense to you. And um, so I'll be. Uh, many of you are interested in uh, such uh, Excel-based calculations. I will gradually start doing this uh, as and when I get time in the future. Thank you for uh, watching. I'll catch you again later. Bye. -bye.